Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, uh, we've got a great show today, uh, and I know that you are teaching some classes at Columbia that you really uh, are excited about having our guest on because you've got a lot of information that uh, you want to talk about, right? Absolutely, because we're going to be talking today about children coping with grief and loss. Several years ago, the administration asked me to design a class called Traumatic Loss During Childhood. And it's looking at our losses when we're children and how they impact us throughout our life course. And the reason I'm so interested about Maria is because she works with children that are from three to five. And while there's a lot of information information out there on how to help older children, there's not all that much information out there on how to help children that are young. So I'm just interested to see what she finds is helpful for kids that are grieving and that have had trauma. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's going to help you who are have younger children, because I know one of our major things as a parent is worried about your kids after the, there's a loss, younger children. So how do you want to introduce our guest today? Our guest is Maria Soder. She is a bereaved mom whose son Sammy was born on April 11, 2006, and he only lived for 34 days. She is the CEO and founder of the Sammy Center, and this has been named in memory of her son. The Sammy Center is a preschool founded to help children overcome trauma. So welcome to our show, Maria. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. It's wonderful to have you on today, and uh, we appreciate the work you're doing so much, and it's so important. I know that when Sammy died at 34 days, he was just 40, 34 days old, and you had a daughter that was four at the time. Is that correct? That's correct. And I know that I read that she really struggled, and I wanted to know if you could tell us a little bit more about, about that. Yes, I would, I would love to. I'd like to start with kind of um, where, where the Sammy Center kind of came up. It really actually didn't start with um, my own direct trauma. Um, that came a little bit later. So what happened was... Um, I have been in the early childhood field for over 25 years in one capacity or another. And um, most recently, um, the most wonderful program is called Head Start. And I served as a special needs liaison and also work very closely with the mental health team. And they do amazing things. And there's so many wonderful, amazing programs that are, that are really trying to help children as much as they can. But in my, during my time there, I saw a little bit of a gap. And the gap was that if a child didn't have a direct special need, it was oftentimes difficult to get them the extra services that they need. And so as I, as I really um, dug deep and got into the mental health and um, the social emotional you know, lives of these little children that I was serving ages three to five, I also heard the, at the time the CEO of the Children's Center speaking. And this was five years ago. And he said something that really resonated with me. He said, there is an early childhood mental crisis going on. And this was before the pandemic. And he said, we need to all just jump in. We need to all do more. And that really resonated with me. And that's kind of when I had my first epiphany, where I was like, what if I need to do just, I need to do more. I was so honored and blessed to work in this organization. I was, but that's kind of when I got my, my idea. And so as I started to work um, on this project, um, about a year or two years into it, I had my own epiphany. And I said, oh my gosh, my own daughter is one of these children. And I'm sorry, because it's just, it never leaves you. It's been right. 16 years. And um, Mama Horsley here uh, knows what I'm talking about. It doesn't ever go away, the loss wow. of a child. But anyway, so as I'm doing all this amazing work, and I'm so excited about creating the school where we're going to focus on social emotional for these children. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What's going on in your, in your body and in your mind? Um, not a special need, not a physical special need, but more mental. 
I had the epiphany that my own little Theodora was four years old and so excited to become a big sister. Her little brother, we knew that he was sick when I was pregnant. We got uh, the, the, the horrible news from the sonographer that something was wrong with his brain. And at that time we were told your baby can live or your baby could die. Mm -hmm. There was really like this huge spectrum, you know? And my husband and I, Sam, we said, you know what? We're gonna have this baby. We're gonna just, we're gonna just put it in the hands of God and and whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. So we had Sammy, um, he was born at full term. He was beautiful. He weighed seven and a half pounds. He, physically, he was perfect. But Sammy had what was called a genesis of corpus callosum, where the middle part of his brain didn't develop. A lot of people amongst us actually walking around us today don't have this part of their brain and are doing fine. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Sammy had other syndromes. He had lysencephaly, um, which is smooth brain. So he didn't have the, like the grooves and the valleys in your brain. Um, so he had no cognitive ability and he had, he had many other syndromes that eventually ended up taking his life. Um, but when I was, like I said, I'm in the process of like doing this, building the school and figuring out what I'm going to do, realizing that my own little girl at four years old um, could never like leave my side. She had severe separation anxiety um, because in her mind, okay, Sammy's here today. Sammy's gone tomorrow. Right. How, why is that not possible with mom or with dad or with other people right. that I love? So she developed a very close attachment to me. And it was very difficult for me to, um, to leave her. And in preschool, as amazing as her preschool was, they weren't equipped. They didn't know how to work with this little girl that, that was sad and crying and anxious all the time. And Theodora's behaviors weren't outwardly um, you know, aggressive or biting or hurting or whatever. They were inward. She was sad. She was scared. She had anxiety. Did you understand at that time what was going on with her or was it this the revelation later? This was my revelation later. Wow. What a, what a gift you're giving to people to tell them that are watching this, that if these are some of these things going on with their child, that it may be connected with a loss. Isn't it, Heidi? Absolutely. Because, you know, children from three to five sometimes don't have the verbal skills that we have as adults. And so things manifest semantically. You know, they manifest in your body or through behavioral problems or concentration or being ill, et cetera. And so I'm just wondering, Maria, what are things that people can do that parents out there can do that are worried about their kids or that, or that are seeing these kind of things in their children? That's such a great question. Thank you. And here's the thing. No parent wants to admit that there's something wrong with their child. Nobody wants to say that. Nobody wants to see that. And it wasn't that I didn't even want to see that. What, here's what I did. I tried to keep Theodora happy. In my mind as a mom, my job was take her to Italy, take her to Disneyland. Let's just keep that little smile on her face. As long as I can see her smiling, she's happy. But guess what? She wasn't happy. And inside she was developing, you know, she had this anxiety. And so I think the answer is just to, just to be aware. What's important is let's talk about your feelings, Theodora. How are you feeling? Let, let's 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 address what's going on in her mind and in her and in her body and then how do you address that with a younger child i think that um the first thing is awareness like we have to be aware as adults and parents and educators we need to be aware of what's going on with the child and so what what's going on with us may not be relevant it may not be important to us or we may not think it's important but what's going on with that little child and it doesn't necessarily have to be death or loss it could be what we're experiencing with this pandemic. It could be a three-year-old that's never seen anybody's face because they've always been in a mask. It could be uh, refugees coming from another country. And then of course, yes, it could be, you know, witnessing domestic violence or fighting or separation or divorce of parents. I don't think we realize. And so what I want to do with this school and with this opportunity today is really create awareness. Like, let's be aware of what's going on with our children. And when they're they're behaving in any way, it's communication. They're trying to tell us something. I think that we're fearful of sharing what's going on in our homes. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that it's affecting our children. I think along with the awareness, I think that we need to, yes, look at, at programs that are supporting social, emotional needs. 
of children at a very young age. You know, that's a, a good point. One of the reasons is, you said it, as a parent, we're so traumatized, it's hard for us to meet every need of a kid and do it on our own. And you do need to reach out to community. How do I find something in my community? Well, there's always, you know, a Google search, type in social emotional programs. Um, check with our your local school or your private school. As I said, this network, this group of people that are coming together um, on a monthly, bi-monthly basis, we're trying to create awareness. We're trying to to create that. So Maria, the kids that come to your school that are from three to five to your preschool have had traumatic losses in one form or another. And I'm wondering what kind of things do you do for them that would be different from just say a mainstream school? Well, the entire premise of our program is social emotional. Along with that, sure, there's academic colors and learning and singing and, and playing and um, you know, STEM and all these types of things. But a child, if a child is in trauma or is in fight or flight or is not feeling safe, they are not able to learn. And so at the SAMI Center, we will work very closely with every single family. They come to us knowing that the more they can tell us, the more we can support them and their child. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is our curriculum. We are following um, several social emotional curriculums. We don't want to ignore, we want to say, we're going to talk about it. So when Thea, I want to quickly tell you a little anecdote. When she was four and we had just lost the baby, I overheard her playing with a friend. And she said, okay, I'm going to be the mom and I'm pregnant. And then my baby's going to die. And then you're going to be sad. And then we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. But see, I didn't realize what was going on at the time. But if, if this little Theodora was in the Sammy Center, we would engage and we would get down on her level with her. We'd say, tell us more about this. Tell us how is mommy feeling or what, what is happening? And try and get her to express herself more and talk about it versus ignore it. Mm -hmm. So okay, you suggest so as a parent that you talk about it more with your child and not ignore it? Absolutely. Parent at home. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like this. I just have another question. So if you have children, I mean, like you said, it's all with Theodore, it's normal to be anxious around separating from parents after a loss. If you have children that come to your center that are three to five years old and are having a lot of anxiety around separation, how do you handle it? What kind of things do you do? Yes, we have, uh, as you walk into our center in the very back of the center, there's a room and it's, uh, it's kind of called, we're calling it like a receiving room. So if a child's escalated when they're getting dropped off or they're, they're having a hard time being dropped off, we will incorporate routine. So what we would do is establish some sort of a routine with the family or the caregiver. And we would, we would implement that routine every day at drop off with the child. If the parent needs to stay for a while and, and, and get the child acclimated, we're okay with that. We want them to separate eventually, but we would do that in the receiving room. So we would set up routines, get the child comfortable and ready to separate from the, from the parent. Uh, and then go into the classroom knowing, okay, you know, Theodora had a hard time at drop off today. And, and so being very, very extra sensitive to her, you know, in that regard for the rest of the day. Wow, sounds like a wonderful program you're doing. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to give a quick comment to people who are thinking about starting a nonprofit like you have just done that. How hard is it? How do I go about it? Oh, thank you for asking that. You know, I, I'm kind of a half glass full kind of person. So I'm just like, oh, you know what? Starting this nonprofit, sure, there's been two steps forward, three steps back. It's been one of the greatest things I've ever done. Um, I think that I could not be doing this with, without the, the support of the community and the people involved. So I love sharing my story. People want to be involved. People want to help. And so I think with the nonprofit, it's like, you just have to kind of, it's a village. It takes a village, mm -hmm. you know, take, take the support, take the help, you know, give the love and, and it will come back. It has been an amazing experience. It really has. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and for everything that you've done and are doing for your community. And uh, there are other communities like the Dougie Center does a lot of training. If you go online, they have a lot of national programs that you can look into.
But I, I think the message for me here today, Heidi, is this, and I could say it for myself also as a bereaved parent, is don't do it on your own. There is a community in a village out there you can find it through the internet. There are people there who will help you and will give you support there. You just have to reach out if it may be a local hospice or a hospital, or I know the University of Utah is involved with things. You can uh, find out about these programs that are going on nationally for you. So I'm thinking, don't do it alone. What are you thinking, Heidi? I, I agree with you. And I love the Sammy Center in Utah. And I would say, I mean, like I said, there's not enough services for children from three to five. Mm -hmm. There's really not. We start thinking about children's issues, emotional and psychological issues from five up, you know? And I mean, there's so much that happens during those formative years. I mean, and I love that Maria is hitting this head on when kids are still really young. It's so important. So I would say if you live in Utah and you have a loss and you have a child from three to five that might need this type, kind of support, please go visit the Sammy Center. Absolutely. Thank you so much. The best way to reach us is to go to our website, the Sammy Center, S-A-M-M-Y.com. Uh, also uh, calling 801-631-2006. And I can just give the address. We're located in Mill Creek. Uh, we're an adorable little cottage um, off on 33rd South and 1515 East. All right. Well, thank you again for being on, Maria, and for all, all that you're doing to help families. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Maria, and thank you for everything you're doing for the children out there that have had trauma and loss. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for joining us on the show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own, and God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.